Employees who have access to insider information like trade secrets, intellectual property, and personal data have an ethical obligation to safeguard it. However, everyday individuals, when given a choice to do the right thing, decide otherwise. I am talking about the consequences of unethical practices in the workplace, particularly regarding computers and their information. Insider threats are a genuine problem, one that seems to haunt every large corporation today. But unfortunately, it seems all too easy when individuals are unhappy with the employer to sabotage that company either by destroying data, denying access, or releasing information. Not only are these actions unethical in most cases, but they are also illegal, depending on the damage they caused and what effect it had. Good morning, or afternoon. My name is Brian Langford. Today I want to discuss two particular cases in which two individuals decided to wreak havoc on their employers, which caused monetary or national harm. One case you are well aware of, but the first case I'm not so sure. Some of you may not even been born, and presumably those who were alive didn't even pay attention to it. Why? Computer sabotage was something new, and this case would be the first time someone would be tried by a jury using a new law governing this. I'm talking about the Omega Time Bomb. First, who is Omega Engineering? Omega Engineering is a thermal couple manufacturing company founded in the kitchen in 1962 by Betty Hollander, a mother of four. The company began by producing thermocouples and developed many other measuring devices to include pH measuring devices. The company employed many women during a time when women in the workforce were not that common. Omega manufactured products and parts for the United States Navy and NASA among many other large companies. One of their larger manufacturing plants based in Bridgeport, New Jersey, also the, the company's headquarters. The Omega time bomb story begins here. Tim Lloyd was a 39-year-old computer manager who designed and maintained the Omega engineering network at the Omega South manufacturing plant. Tim was well-versed in the use and application of the Novell network operating system. He was responsible for writing and designing the more than 1,000 programs used in the manufacturing process. In addition, he was responsible for maintaining, updating, and backing up the files that the company relied on for production. Tim Lloyd worked for Omega for more than 10 years. During this time, his behavior and attitude changed. His behavior with the employers and the other employees forced Omega to end their long-term relationship three weeks before the system crashed. However, before being terminated, Tim Lloyd had known his time was coming to an end, and he was going to ensure that the termination would hurt him and hurt Omega as well. So six months before Tim left the company, he began orchestrating a plan to take down the plant by eliminating all of the computer files required for the machines for manufacturing. On three separate occasions, Tim tested his code on a file directory named Test on the company's server that housed the manufacturing programs. His first attempt was in February, then April, and Tim did his last test a month before the incident. On the faithful morning of July 31, 1996, a company employee arrived the first thing in the morning and started up the company's computer as they have done many times before that day. The computer system was responsible for managing over 1,000 programs, responsible for manufacturing 25,000 products, and holding 500,000 custom parts. After the employee started the computer, the computer stated that it was fixing files. The employee assumed the system was preparing corrupt files and allowed the program to run its course. Unfortunately, the crash forced manufacturing plant Jim Ferguson to keep running programs that were already loaded into the manufacturing machines on the floor to keep the more than two dozen employees employed. The computer failure forced the company to mass produce the parts that were already loaded to run until the company ran out of raw materials. The mass production caused an overstock of the pieces, forcing the company to shut down the plant and putting hundreds of Omega jobs at stake. A profitable company that had been successfully operating for more than 30 years, the company and its future were now held hostage by six lines of code written by one disgruntled tech-savvy employee. The investigation. To help determine the cause of the crash, Omega Engineering hired Kroll OnTrack, a data recovery company based in Minnesota. Bob Hackett, an expert in data recovery with Novell operating systems, assigned to inspect the Omega's server hard drive. He discovered that the hard drive was physically undamaged, so now it appeared it might be the work of a saboteur. 
Omega enlisted the help of the Secret Service. The Secret Service had a team trained in computer fraud and electronic forensics. Bob Hackett realized that somebody didn't simply delete the data, they purged it. Purge eliminates data from being recovered, essentially making the data completely unrecoverable. After issuing a search warrant for Tim Lloyd's house, the Secret Service recovered two hard drives, and one of the drives contained the same six lines of code found on the company's server tying him to the crime. Before this investigation, a new law made computer sabotage a federal crime involving interstate commerce and causing more than $5,000 in damage. His case would be the first time the government had used the statue to indict someone for this type of crime. The sabotage caused Omega $10 million in lost business, $2 million in reprogramming costs, and 80 employees laid off. Tim Lloyd was sentenced to three and a half years in order to pay $2 million in restitution. According to Secret Service, Tim Lloyd's hacking is considered to be one of the most significant worker-related sabotages in United States business history. As computer scientists, we have a moral obligation to protect our employees' data and intellectual property, and at times administrators, administrators are trusted with millions of dollars in computer infrastructure. When I was in the Air Force, I was responsible for maintaining a $24 million network we were responsible for safeguarding 9,000 user accounts and their data. There are network administrators, and then there are administrators who hold the keys to the castle as Tim Lloyd. Administrators like this are dangerous because you must put so much trust in them, as with Omega, who almost certainly never made that mistake again. When I was an administrator on the Air Force network, I could have completely wiped out base network directories and accounts, and I had access to hundreds of servers in our building. The Air Force Omega's one difference was the Air Force had tools to monitor strange activity on the network and had many safeguards. We had multiple data repositories on the base in different locations and remote sites as far as a few thousand miles away from our site. As we have seen, there are many ethical and legal implications for our profession. I wonder do you think that Omega could have done to prevent this disaster? For example, the operating system used was only three years old during the time of the incident. They used Novell's network, NetWare 3.1.2 operating system that, according to Wikipedia, could cluster using RAID, allowing for mirroring the drive into multiple drives or completely separate machines. In my opinion, one of the company's significant mistakes was not hiring a Novell company representative to set up a robust, stable, and redundant data security system. The second biggest mistake the company made is it did not have multiple network administrators. They were just as capable and knew the system just as well as Tim Lloyd did. In 1996, it was conceivable to have each plant back up their systems to another site for a fail-safe mechanism, since the operating system also supported large networks. His actions did more than merely harm a company. It caused financial hardships on the employees as well. According to McAfee, 43% 43% of data breaches are by insiders. The second case involved an Army intelligence analyst who would rock the intelligence world and bring the name WikiLeaks to everyone's mind. Chelsea Manning enlisted in the United States Army in 2007. After graduating from basic military training and graduation from advanced ind individual training, Chelsea graduated as Military Occupational Specialty 37F Intelligence which required top secret sensitive compartmental information, which means the data is so top secret that an individual should never have full access to the picture. The data is that only authorized persons have access to the information that is considered a need to know to perform your, fu your functions. Compartmentalization of data is a standard practice in the military. This minimizes the chances of the information deemed to cause grave danger to the national security of being released either accidentally or on purpose. Chelsea Manning deployed to forward operating base Hammer in Iraq in October of 2009. During her deployment, Manning wrote to a gender counselor and told them of her opposition to the war in Iraq. After a tumultuous time, Manning began communicating with WikiLeaks in January of 2010. On January 5th, she downloaded 400,000 classified documents from the base's databases containing the data about the Iraq War, later known as the Iraq War Logs. Later that month, she would download 91,000 documents related to Afghanistan, later known as the Afghan War Logs. Then, in early February of 2010, she sent the files to WikiLeaks, 
after one of her most serious charges of espionage for disclosing nearly 750,000 classified diplomatic cables and unclassified but sensitive documents, she was later court-martialed and sentenced to 35 years in prison, which would later be commuted by President Obama after serving seven years. Insider threats like Chelsea are hard to identify and often cause more damage than outside attacks. Individuals who betray the trust of those who gave them access have an advantage in destroying, leaking, or stealing. They know what information will hurt the companies the most, whether it be trade secrets, intellectual property, or information that could cause terrible public relations issues. Employees who have access to insider information like trade secrets, intellectual property, and personal data have an ethical obligation to safeguard it. I hope you consider this when given such a huge responsibility that you choose to do the right thing and protect the entrusted data. Insider threats are a genuine problem and one that seems to haunt every large corporation today. But you can do so these risks by paying attention to employees that have access to data and speak up when something doesn't feel right. I discussed two particular cases in which two individuals decided to wreak havoc on their employers which caused monetary or national harm. I told you about the Omega time bomb where the individual with six lines of code nearly destroyed a company and about an army analyst who rocked the intelligence community by disseminating hundreds of thousands of classified documents to the World Wide Web. Insider threats are real, and we must be vigilant to protect against them. Thank you for your time, and I hope you found this information interesting and gave you something to consider when thinking about ethics as it relates to computer science and the ethical responsibility we have all have to safeguard the data and the systems they reside on. Thank you.